with respect to cognitive performance and things that may increase directly or indirectly ability to enter into and sustain flow state, are there, you know, neuro specific peptides or other interventions? I know you and I talked about uh, neurofeedback and also um, TMS and things like that. Are there other kind of interventions that people should be aware of for, for cognitive performance that may or may not, you know, improve access to flow state as well? Definitely. There's a lot of what we call neural peptides or nootropic peptides. So nootropic, think about nootropic as something that's enhancing brain abilities, enhancing brain function. The old movie Limitless, which probably was before your time, but you know, was basically based on this, a drug that people could take that just made their brains better. Made the, so limitless, they, their brain could do anything, right? And that's actually very true that we actually do have peptides and some drugs, but peptides that will improve in almost 100% of people the brain's ability to function, its capacity to send messages more rapidly, to learn more rapidly, so that you remember better. You know, so, so there's a couple of peptides that actually were developed in Russia. Dr. Kavinson, who's a Russian scientist, he actually developed these for the Russian army many, 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 many years ago for the Russian army to help their performance. So when they were under these stressed states, they could still perform at their best. And so that's kind of where they got their start. Now, again, more widely used by the rest of us. And there's, so there's, there's two, and they're used as nasal sprays. And the cool thing about the brain and the nose is you can access, access the brain pretty easily. Like you can do surgery on the brain through the nose. So there's a very nice ability to get peptides right to the brain simply by using them as an inhaler, right? So what we can do is there's a couple of peptides, one called C-Lank. And C-Lank is a nootropic peptide that works on a couple, number one, it reduces anxiety a little bit. So when you look at people who have sports, for instance, or jobs that are very, very stressful, and they're, they're, they're I'm taking a day, I'm so stressed, I can't think. So what these peptides do, what c -Lank does is it, it reduces the brain's kind of anxiety level and allows you to focus better. So it's making people less anxious, more focused. So if you look like I have a, uh, an athlete who's one of those guys who has to do these, these triathlon things where they're shooting, you know, is one of the events. And, you know, you have to be able to re be really, really focused to do that. So you can do something like C-Link with those people and help them to focus better. So, you know, shooting guns, things like that can be things that really, you need that, that really fine tuned ability to really reduce anxiety and improve focus. So C-Link is really sort of an anti-anxiety improved focus. And then has a sister peptide called C-Max. And a lot of times we'll, we'll kind of alternate these back and forth. But C-Max, on the other hand, makes the brain um, perform better. So it's not, it's not really anti-anxiety. It's better for memory and enhancing the brain's ability to utilize more segments, to use more of your brain. So basically, I love those two peptides. There's other ones as well, something called dihexa. So dihexa is another peptide. Actually, dihexa was investigated primarily for Parkinson's, and it's actually quite effective in Parkinson's patients, but has nootropic benefits in most of us as well. You know, last to that list is there's a, a peptide that's widely used in Austria called cere cerebral lysin. And cerebral lysin is if, if you have a stroke or a traumatic brain injury and you're in Austria or China, one of the first things I'll do is I'll give you IV infusions of cerebral lysin. So it is their first line defense as soon as you come into the hospital with a stroke or traumatic brain injury with much better outcomes than we have here. So basically, it's a neural repair peptide. Widely investigated in dementias like Alzheimer's, in traumatic brain injuries. So it helps to actually, it's one of the, you know, we always used to say the brain can't, once it's injured, it can't really restore. We, we know it's not true. We know that your whole life, you still have the ability to recover brain function, even if it was damaged. So, you know, our old adage that once the brain's hurt, it's hurt forever. You're going to get whatever recovery in the first year. Not so. We now know that there's ways to actually make new neurons grow, to, to form new pathways. And cerebral license is one of the ways that, that you can do that. You can actually grow new neurons. You can actually make the brain function better. It's also really useful for others, like, like people who've had nerve damage, sciatica, things like that. You can utilize it in that realm too. For instance, we have a um, young kid from Montana. You know, every, every mom's nightmare kid goes off to college his freshman year. He's riding in the back of his buddy's pickup truck because that's legal in Montana. And kid stops short and he flies out of the back of the pickup truck, horrible traumatic brain injury. I mean, you know, wasn't expected to live, but he survived. It was pretty messed up. 
And he kind of got as far as the general medicine world could take him. And, and arguably much better than anybody thought he would do. I mean, he could walk and he could talk and he could feed himself, but he certainly wasn't good enough to really kind of carry on a good conversation with you. He, um, he had, you know, his eyes couldn't track together. He couldn't, definitely could not go back to school or learn anything. So we had him fly out here. We've done like three courses now, a week at a time of cerebral lysin, and he's, you know, he can carry on a conversation. Um, he'll probably go back to school in the fall. So, you know, even after a period of time of being, you know, sort of told this is as good as it gets, buddy, we've been able to improve him. So if you can get people more acutely in this realm, even better. It's also really nice for people who have early dementia, cognitive declines. Again, if you do this testing, lots of times people who don't even know they have cognitive decline do. So we can actually start intervening, we hope, earlier on people by, by doing the testing, knowing they have decline, and then offering them these different techniques, be it maybe starting with cerebral ice and then using you know, some of these other peptides, neural peptides. But I think that you know, when you look at the, like, your, sort of your whole flow state, sometimes is there ways to help the body, the brain work in a better flow state? And that's where I think like C-Lank and CNAX are super helpful for that. If I can get my brain out of that anxiety state into a state where it's very able to really focus to task, I'm going to perform better. And so I think that these are, you know, are they cheater techniques to do that? I think sometimes people sort of think what we do is cheating in a sense, right? And I would say, mm, you know, if, if somebody told me, you know, from my perspective that, you know, that I, I could have a little chip implanted in my arm and have superpowers, would I do it? Yeah, I probably would. You know, <laughs> you know I think that, I think in, in, in my mind, if the technology is there, should we utilize and it's safe? Should we utilize it? You know, I think so. I think that we should utilize these these things to help us perform better, and not just say, okay, yeah, do all these mindset, which is obviously very important. I'm not going to, you know, mm -hmm. argue that that using mindset techniques and all that kind of stuff is so incredibly important to people. But are enhancements useful? Yeah.